So welcome everyone to data pre-processing. This is the first uh, talk. And today we are going to talk about the, some introduction about this concept and uh, something about data integration. My name is Anne Ren and I am a research associate at Cathy Marsh Institute and the UK Data Service. I'm based in Manchester. And my email is attached here. If you have any questions, you can um, come to the Q&A session later, or you can just send me send me an email after this talk and I'm very willing to help you. So this is the um, table of content. There are, there are two talks and one code demonstrations on this topic. One talk on today and another one on next Thursday. Today we are going to cover the definition, context, and uh, collecting data, and also um, data integration, mainly on joining tables. And next Thursday, we're going to cover more on data cleaning, data reduction, and data transformation. On the Thursday after next Thursday, we're going to deliver a live streaming code demonstration on YouTube. We're going to provide some sample Python codes and perform these tasks. If you are interested in this, you're very welcome to join the next two sessions. Also, if you want to know more about this topic or any specific part that I didn't mention, we're going to send a questionnaire after the talk and please leave your comments there to help us to improve. And also, although we cannot hear you during the talk, we will have a Q&A session later and answer the questions then. But meanwhile, you are welcome to leave your questions in the Q&A box throughout the talk. My colleague Julia and Joe will answer them directly there if it's not too complicated, or they might leave it to the Q&A session, so don't worry. So without further ado, let me give you a definition of data pre-processing. Data pre-processing, or known as data preparation, is the process of manipulating or pre-processing raw data from one or more sources into a structured and clean data set for analysis. It is an important part of data analytics. When the data has been fully prepared, it is then ready for further analysis like classification, association, prediction, and clustering of the data. There's no clear recipe or standard for data pre-processing, usually it includes various tasks and considerations. For example, selecting and acquiring data to use, integrating different data sources together, conducting exploratory analysis, and also cleaning and repairing data, like dealing with missing data, inconsistent data, and also data reduction, transformation, etc. So generously, generally speaking, it can be regarded as everything you do before the actual modeling. And uh, Harvard University labeled the data analyst or data scientist as the sexiest job of the 21st century. It seems like in these days, everyone wants a data, data scientist and for good reason. According to LinkedIn, the career has seen exponential growth and becoming the second fastest growing profession. A huge amount of data is generated each day, but many companies are still facing obstacles when it comes to utilizing their data correctly, and some are not even sure of what to do with their data science team. Here's a graph of one day in data. You can see that around 500 million tweets are generated each day, and on Facebook, around four parabytes of data generated, including 300 and 500, 350 million photos and 100 million hours of video watching time. So it is fair to say that uh, the, the popular phrase, big data is not an exaggeration. We're facing a real data deluge now, which means that the amount of data being generated is overwhelming the capacity of organizations to use them. And the organizations all know that the raw data itself is not a treasure. Only if the data is attached with good preparation and proper analytics, it can then provide actionable knowledge so that we can get insights or findings that we want. The companies in real world, especially the big international ones, put much effort in thinking about how to use data to provide more service um, around the data. For example, you may have heard of Google Trends. Some scholars use it to tr track the change of popularity of something that they want to study. And also digital banking is something that where you can find a personalized page or reports within the bank apps in your cell phones. 
and also YouTube analysis, many YouTubers use it to see what kind of content will make them lose their audience so that they can avoid these kind of contents next time. And also a typical example is Amazon recommendation. When you log into your Amazon account, you can always see a lot of automatic recommendations for you that allure you to make more orders. They are all based on your past searches and per purchases. So in some sense, we can see that the world nowadays is full of pitfalls. As your data is almost recorded every second, the businesses will collect the data analyze them and then create more str strategic presentations or products to attract your attention and you find yourself spend more time and money on them and without doubt this this phenomenon is going to be more and more severe in the following decades so everyone needs to be prepared for this big data change Well, it should be minded that although all these applications sounds pretty direct and easy, there's a big gap between the expectation and the reality of this work. I think this picture is a really good presentation. Real, data, real world data analytics is full of challenges and some challenges might be very time consuming or even impossible to overcome. Rather than developing the fancy algorithms or plot the eye-catching figures, much time and effort are spent on data collection and preparation. Forbes found that data pre pre preparation accounts for about 80% of the work of data scientists. In particular, 19% is spent on collecting data sets and 69% is spent on cleaning and organizing data and other tasks like building training set collect uh, and mining data for patterns and refining algorithms and others, they only account for a very little in comparison. It is not unfair to say that data preparation is crucial for getting meaningful results from data analytics. Not enough time. <clears throat> so it's insufficient to prepare the data list to garbage in and garbage out, which we also call it as GIGO. It is a computer, sci computer science acronym that implies bad input will result in bad output, which is the message of this picture. Well, it says that if your business is a house, the data is its foundation. So before cleansing, um, the data quality might be only 40%. And if you do anything on it, you might get wrong prediction. So you don't have any meaningful results or any meaningful message from it. However, if you do proper data cleansing, then data quality can be improved to 90%. Then you can build your house on it. You can get right prediction on it. Then you get the meaningful insights and findings. So although data pre-processing may not appear in your research plan or in your methodology plan, but please don't forget to forget it or underestimate it, it is very crucial in your research or in your data analysis. How to check data quality? There are many ways to check data, the quality of your data, and here I'd like to cover two common ways. One is to use metadata. Metadata is the data about the data. The motivation is to better understand the data, including its availability, types, quantity, complexity, and other things. Another one is exploratory data analysis or EDA. EDA is, a wild, is wildly used in data analytics and one of its function is to check data quality. It is an approach to analyzing data sets to summarize their main characteristics and often with visual methods. EDA is primarily for seeing what the data can tell us before formal modeling or hypothesis test, testing tasks. For example, if I have sales at hand and I want to build a model to predict the performance of next month, then maybe I will start with EDA to do some random exploration, such as creating histogram to see whether there are any region stands out from the rest, or if maybe weekends have a clear higher income. Among others, the source of data is very crucial to determine the data quality from the very beginning. There are many ways to collect the data. If you run your own business, which generates data itself, then you might think about the build a data warehouse to store the data and organize it as you wish. And the data can be easily retrieved when needed, but that usually costs a lot. 
or maybe you can scrape, scrape data from website to collect the raw data yourself. But that usually takes longer time to pre-process it as the data tends to be very dirty. For example, the if I scrape the data from a hotel page, then the price may be shown as a piece of text rather than a number. Then I need to change it later. But the good point is that if I do web scraping, then I can customize the data structure while collecting the data. Alternatively, you can use the ready-made data sources, for example, Statista, which is usually for business data, and also World Bank's UKD, UKDS, which is UK Data Service. You can find a lot of open source data on UK Data Service website, including um, census data, international macro data, qualitative data, and survey data. You can also access data from other providers and use UKDS API to customize the layout as you want and then export the data. The data is usually clean and this may save much time from data reduction and integration later. And there are detailed instructions on how to access and use the data. So that's it for the context and for collecting data. And then you may ask again, what do we do in a typical data pre-processing after we have the data at hand? Well, major tasks in data pre-processing include data integration. That means the integration of multiple databases, data cubes or files, and data description, summarization and visualization, which is also included in the EDA part. And also data cleaning, which means fill in the missing values, smooth, noisy values, and identify or remove outliers and noisy data, and resolve inconsistencies. And data reduction, which is usually to obtain, reduce, reduce the representation in volume, but produce the same or similar analytical results. And data transformation, which is usually the normalization and aggregation. And last not but not least is data discretization and data generalization. That means that you maybe categorize the, the, the continuous data into different categories so that we can build a model on that. But it should be bear in mind that, as I said, there's no recipe or standard for data pre-processing at the moment. So there's no certain order of doing these steps. All these tasks that are just the most common ones. In fact, it's quite often that you will have to repeat some of them multiple times. For example, after reading the metadata, meta you clean the data to deal with the missing values at the beginning. And then after joining the tables, you find that some new missing values are created and they need to clean it again. So in the rest of today's session, I'm going to talk about the first entry, data integration. And for the next Thursday, I'm going to cover how to clean, reduce, and transform the data. By definition, data integration is combining data from multiple sources into a unified view. The benefits include to improve data quality, to enrich data with additional information, and to allow reliable data analytics and beyond. Data integration is a kind of unavoidable step to some extent as it is not common that all information will be stored in one spreadsheet. For example, I have a data set on hotel information, including the hotel's name, city, star level, et cetera, which is very static. And also I have another data set of the reservation, including the customer's name, hotel name, payment methods, price, and others, which is always updated and if I want to find which features of the hotel determine the hotel's popularity, then I will first need to link the two tables based on the hotel name or hotel ID. So this is a very typical data integration. Usually integrating in-house data within data warehouse together is relatively straightforward with common attributes and structures across the schemas. For example, joining the tables As the name indicates, joining the tables enable you to extract and simultaneously process data from more than one table. There are four types of joining, inner join, full join, left join, and right join. 
Notice that the methods are quite common in various applications and languages. So SQL and Python may have different joining commands, but you can always select which join type you want to use. And also, we, you should remember that we check data quality after the joining, because as sometimes new missing values or unexpected roles might be created during the joining process. And if, you do, if we do not recheck the data quality, then maybe the, after the joining, the quality of the data might even be reduced. So the first type is uh, inner join. By default, the joining query performs an inner join, which includes matching rows only in the results. So for example, we have employee, employee payroll here and employee organization here. And uh, we can match, we can join these two tables on the column employee ID and only the rows that uh, um, are that are presented in both tables will be kept in the merged data set. So this is the inner join. If a row, if the employee ID only appears in one table, then it will be dropped in the final data set. By contrast, a full, a full outer join includes all rows from both tables, but it will create a lot of missing values for example, the row fifth in the merged data set, it doesn't have the department on the second table, so that field is missing. And similarly, the last row in the merged data set, it doesn't have the salary in the first table, so that is another missing value. A left join is a bit different. A left join includes all rows from the left table, and by left table here, I mean the table that you put first in your command. And uh, similarly, a right join includes all the rows from the right table, which is the table you put on the second place in your command. So these two kind of um, joining is very sensitive to the order of the tables in the command. So we need to be careful on which table we put first. Data integration is not an easy job as there are many difficulties. First is the database heterogeneity, including system heterogeneity and schema schematic heterogeneity. System heterogeneity occurs when using different operation system hardware platforms and the schematic or structural heterogeneity is the, uh, is the cases where the native model or structure to store data um, differs. So for example, um, the SQL database versus the NoSQL no database. If we want to combine the data sets from the two different database, then we need to think about uh, how, to, um, how to make them compatible with each other as they have different structure. The second issue is about detecting and resolving data value conflicts. For the same real world entity attributes values from um, different sources are different, including different representations, different scales, for example, metrics versus British units. Last but not least is the entity identification. When integrating data, we may need to identify entities from multiple data sources, but the same entity or attributes may have different names in different databases. For example, Bill Clinton and William Clinton actually refers to the same person, but they may have different presentations in different databases. We will discuss this later in the data linkage. A very vivid example is the health surveillance system, which is quite related to our situation now. Preventing the outbreak of epidemics requires monitoring of occurrence of unusual patterns of symptoms in real time. Data from many different sources need to be collected, including the travel and immigration records, doctors, emergency and hospital admissions, drug purchases in pharmacies, animal health data, etc. Such databases can have different formats and codings, and they usually contain data of different quality. Volume is another issue, as they can contain millions of records. And another issue is the privacy and the confidentiality. If such data are stored and linked at a central location and without the proper regulation, then there might be some privacy issues. Another two parts of data integration is data linkage and data enrichment. They're relatively more complicated and not 
not always needed, so I won't go too deep into it. But I think it's good to know about them in case that you may encounter them in some days. Data linkage is the process of bringing together information from two different records that are believed to belong to the same entity based on matching variables. It is also known as record linkage, data matching, and entity identification or others. It is a challenging task if there are errors in their key variables that are used to link the data. There are two kinds of linkage. First is a deterministic linkage. Records must agree on exactly uh, records must agree exactly on the key attributes in order to conclude that they correspond to the same entity. It can be used when a high quality identifier such as ID numbers are available. Another kind is a probabilistic linkage. It doesn't require that all key variables match. Rather, it involves frequency analysis of the data values, which helps to calculate a weight that indicates how likely that the two fields refer to the same entity. Sometimes there are, not, there are some uncommon value agreement or very strong evidence for linkage, and then they need to be included into consideration manually. So for example, here we have two data sets and we need to think about which of these records represent the same person. And based on the deterministic linkage, we can see that the, we can set the SSN number as the reference. And the, then the row one in set B will be assigned to the row three in set A because they have the same SSN number. However, the row two in set B will fail to find a match because the SSN number is missing in that row. But if we're adopting the um, probabilistic linkage, we, need, we can find the um, row two in set B, a replication of the row one in set A, as they share the same date of birth, sex, and the zip code, although the name is not exactly the same. Another thing is the enriching data. So data enrichment is the process of introducing more data. It can be de disparate data from other internal sources or third-party data from external sources. The benefit is that first, it can improve the context contextualization with additional data. And second, it helps enrich or validate our data. For example, to get a better understanding of advertising effectiveness, a company can enrich its internal sales data with a third-party advertisement data. Enriched data is a valuable asset for any organization because it becomes more useful and insightful. A majority of brands conduct data enrichment on their raw data so that they can use it to make informed decisions. In 2018, data enrichment grew by 80%. So that's it for today's talk. And uh, at last, I want to say that um, some of the content is based on this book, Data Preprocessing and Data Mining, which is published in 2015. So if you are interested in this and want to find more material, you're welcome to consult this book.